and welcome to the Cardiac Rehab Podcast. Today I'm joined by exercise physiologist and nutrition specialist Matthew Beresford and we're going to be talking all about diet and nutrition and in particular macronutrients. So Matt, tell us, what do we mean by macronutrients? Macronutrients are nutrients that our bodies require in larger quantities to be able to function properly. There are three macronutrients, with these being carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Carbohydrates are used by the body both as a primary source of fuel for working muscles and also to provide fuel for the brain. We get carbohydrates predominantly through our consumption of bread, rice, potato and pasta and we should aim that carbohydrates should make up around about 50 to 60% of our total daily food intake. Now to work that out we, would, we could see that there are about, around about 4 calories per gram of carbohydrates so an individual eating 2,000 calories in a day should be aiming to eat around about 250 to 300 grams of carbs in that day. So you've told us about carbohydrates. So are there different types of carbohydrates? For instance, are there a particular type that are better for you to eat? It's better to have carbohydrates through whole grain sources. So brown rice, pasta and bread over white varieties. This is because these carbohydrates contain more fibre and take longer to be digested by the body. The result of this is that insulin demand on the pancreas is reduced and that we feel fuller for longer. This means that we're less tempted to overeat or consume unhealthy snacks between meals. The human body can digest around about 60 grams of carbohydrates in an hour, so it's important that we manage our intake of carbohydrates and not overdo it on portion sizes. Now, we looked at our bodies have the capacity to store around about 500 grams of carbohydrates in the body, and that roughly equates to 100 grams stored within the liver and 400 grams stored within our muscles ready for action. If we eat excessive amounts of carbohydrates, then all that our bodies will do is convert this excess into fat where it is then stored by the body. Okay, great. So it's important then that we stick to the brown varieties of carbohydrates and try not to overdo it with the portion sizes. Okay, so what about proteins then? What are they there for? When we consume protein-rich foods such as meat, poultry, beans and eggs, they're broken down into amino acids, which are the building blocks um, of the body. These amino acids are important for muscle growth and repair, as well as being used by the body to make hormones, enzymes and, and other chemicals. In general population, we should aim to be consuming around about 0.8 grams per kilogram that we weigh per day. So for example, that would work out that a 70 kilogram individual should be aiming to consume at least 56 grams of protein per day. It's important to note that we can only really digest protein in quantities no greater than 20 to 25 grams in a single sitting. And this is the, the equivalent to about three eggs or a chicken breast or a small tin or small fillet of fish. If we do eat excessive amounts of protein, then our bodies will either store it as fat or we'll pee it out when we go to the toilet. Brilliant. So that's really useful to know about the portion sizes of the proteins. So how about fats then? What are fats used for in the body? Fats often get a bad reputation as by name. People think that all fats are unhealthy. But put bluntly, if we don't get fats into our diet, then, then we'll die. We need to make sure that we're having healthier sources and in the correct quantities. Now we need fats to absorb fat-soluble vitamins such as vitamins A, D, E and K. Our bodies also use fats as a primary energy source when we work at lower intensities. So as we're both sat here talking now, it's fats that are the primary source of fuel that we use. Healthy fats are, are those that can be utilised more easily by the body. And examples of those fats are those found in um, nuts and seeds and avocado and oily fish. And it's nice to get at least one of these sources into our diet every day. Now fats are a much denser energy source than carbohydrates and, pro carbohydrates and protein. And they have about 9 calories per gram compared to 4 calories per gram of carbohydrates and protein. Because of this, when we do consume um, fats, we need to make sure that we're having them in smaller portions. For example, just a cupped handful of nuts or seeds. So what about unhealthy fats? Should we keep an eye out for these and should we be mindful of how much of this we eat? Well, unhealthy fats are those that our body struggles to break down and these are found in foods such as cakes and biscuits and butters and cheese and animal fats. It's not to say that you can't have these sorts of foods, however you really do need to make sure that they're not overly prevalent in your diet and that when we do have them, these should instead be considered as an occasional treat. If we, if we were to eat too many of these types of foods um, in our diet, then it will lead to weight gain through excessive calorie consumption 
and it also increased the risk of developing coronary heart disease through having elevated cholesterol levels. Okay, so we need to be mindful then of the amount of saturated fat that we consume within our diet and perhaps just keep that as an occasional treat. So if somebody was wanting to lose weight, what is the best way for them to do this? Weight loss shouldn't be rapid. Ideally, we should be aiming to lose around about one to two pounds per week or about a half to one kilogram. And the most effective way to lose weight and to keep it off is by pairing a calorie controlled diet with regular exercise. The way that we lose weight is to burn more calories than we consume um, and weight gain would occur when it's the other way around. So when more calories are consumed than, than burned. Um, some diets that heavily restrict carbohydrate intake can lead to extreme weight loss over a short space of time. However, this weight loss will be predominantly through um, reduced fluid retention. When carbohydrates are reintroduced, then this weight will just come back. It's important that any changes that you make to your diet in order to lose weight are sustainable in the long term. Otherwise, there's a high probability that we'll return to our original weight, get weight again within 12 months of, of going back to normal. Sometimes people can question how effective intermittent fasted diets work and for those that aren't aware, these are the diets that restrict calorie consumption over say five days a week, but then allow more, more calories to be consumed over the remaining days. And now, these diets work by considering calorie intake over the entirety of the week, rather than on a day by day basis. By reducing calories on the majority of the days, um, then it gives us more calories that we can play with um, on the last couple of days a week, which can be effective because it can feel less restrictive than traditional diets. Um, however, we must be strict with the fasted days and not overdo it on the days that we are allowed higher intakes, um, which some people undertaking this diet can be prone to do. Okay, great. You've given us some really useful information there, Matt, and it's things that we can take into our day-to-day -day life to try and make some healthy changes. I know I found it very useful and we hope that you have too. Thank you for listening.